go. Hey guys, so I know it's been a couple of weeks since I've done a video. Uh, I've been getting really good views on the ones that I've done. Appreciate that very, very much. And I've had a really bad three weeks and it seems to continue going. So I'm gonna do this just to kind of get it out of the way. I'm gonna do a cook today, but I wanted to show you guys this. So this was a gift that I got last week. Wasn't expecting it. And I'm just not gonna even mess around with it. I'm gonna uncover it. You guys see what it is and then go over it. This is the 36 inch Blackstone flat top grill. This is the one that I decided I was not going to go with because of my troubles with the 17 inch. But I got to tell you, so far, I'm kind of impressed with this one. Let me show you why. So this one comes with this lid, which I like. It gives you something to kind of, kind of a backsplash. And it looks like I forgot to get rid of my grease trap for the last time. But we'll go over that in a minute. So this is the one thing that I think is very impressive and I'm, I'm actually happy so far. So that is four burners. Each one has a different igniter. So each one has its own igniter, which is the one complaint that I had with the Blackstone flat top that I knew of. So that's a, that's a great improvement. And I've got a couple of cooks. I've seasoned the griddle already. And I gotta say, I'm actually starting to like this. So let me put this back on there and go over the couple of things that I'm really not too crazy about. Just bear with me a second. There we go. So the grease trap, it is still in the back of the grill. I'm not crazy about that, but I'm not necessarily saying that's a no-go anymore um, based on the way that this grill's performed so far. So as you can see, I've seasoned it. And today I'm gonna do some pork chops that we got from Omaha Steak. That was another gift that got sent to us. And I'm gonna be doing some griddle corn, which is one of my new favorites. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this gas turned on, get it fired up, and we'll start cooking from there. You guys can see how this uh, grill operates. Now, the biggest problem I have with the 17 is it took me 10 to 15 different times to get it to ignite. Here, we've got a pretty decent wind going. Gas is on. Turn this on to where it needs to be. Hit the igniter. It's ignited. What wonderful things will people think of next? Just keep going down the line. cook this stuff off too fast. So there we have it. In less than 10 seconds. Grill's going. Heating up. Doing what it needs to do. I can see that I've got some dog hair. Wonderful. As you guys know, I do this like live. I'm not cutting it, editing it in any way, shape, or form. So there we have it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this heat up and I'm gonna get my bacon going. I'm gonna do it over here on this section. And because I have all this wonderful space now, I can let this heat up for the pork chops. I can let this side cook the bacon and the corn. And we'll be good to go. up just a little bit so I have one pound of thick cut bacon and I took half a pound I'm gonna use it for this particular cook so I'm gonna get that down on there get it starting to do what it needs to do now the griddle corn has been done several different ways um, everybody has their own spin on it I of course have my own spin everything that I do is done 
my way, the way that I like it, the family likes it, so it's probably going to take a good couple of seconds for that to get going. So this unit comes with the side shelves, bottom shelf, four burners, 36 inch cooktop. Each of the shelves has a peg for tool hanging. And if you come around to this side right here, we also have the magnetic strip, which again all co comes with it. Wonderful. That's a magnetic strip. And it actually holds pretty well if you're not drinking quote unquote juice all day long and use it correctly. So Blackstone does have a lot of really good accessories. The spatulas that they have, this one is perhaps my favorite. So I ended up buying a second one. It's thicker. It's more along the lines of the stuff I used to use when I was in the restaurant. So I'm more accustomed to it. It feels better. And it, it, it does what it needs to do. So going back around to the grill. Obviously, I kind of put this down while the grill was still a little cold, so it's going to take a second to kind of fucking start firing up. And I didn't mean to swear there. I didn't. If you guys think you heard it, you didn't. <clears throat> Even though you did. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook this down. I'm going to get it to a certain point. And then I am going to take it off, let it rest. And I have uh, a whole green bell pepper, whole red bell pepper that I diced and a sweet Vidalia onion that I also diced. <clears throat> Those are gonna go on just as I just mentioned them. The bell peppers will go on, start to cook down a little bit, then the on onions. And then the corn. I have one bag of really sweet corn and one bag of just regular corn kernels frozen. I'll throw those on there when everything's good and ready. Put the bacon back in, give it a little bit of seasoning. And that's about when I'm gonna throw the pork chops on. So since I've been doing this, this particular grill, I've used it on the same 20 pound propane cylinder that I purchased when I did the conversion on my 17 inch, which I don't think I put on camera. I don't think I did, but I bought the hose and attached it to the 17 and it still had a hard time lighting. It did light a little bit easier, but just because it's small, the wind took the gas and whatnot, and I can actually still feel the, I really feel the heat coming off of this right now. And the bacon's starting to sizzle, so that's a good sign. So I'm gonna get this about halfway the way I want it. Get it nice and divided, get it separated from each other. There we go, there's the sizzle. Hopefully you guys can hear that. And then I'll pull it off, throw it on a, throw it at a bowl with some paper towels, and let it kind of drain. And that's when I'll start the vegetables. As soon as I start the veg vegetables, I'm gonna put some vegetable oil down here on this side right here. And I'm gonna throw the pork chops, pork chops on. Now the fact that the pork chops came from Omaha Steak is just a coincidence. It was uh, sent to us by my wife's family, family member. And I figured, well, since we got it, why not put it on the grill? So hopefully y'all are doing good with this COVID thing where we've like ramped up and then we started opening up and now we're closing back down again, I guess, such as life. I know with my particular employment, um, I've been working the whole time. It's uh, a little bit of a change since we've opened back up, but it, uh, you know, it is what it is. You got to make a dollar, so you got to work. So the corn recipe I've gotten off of, I've looked at a few videos, and I've also looked at the a uh, couple of uh, written recipes about how the corn is made. Um, so this is more kind of like a southwestern style corn, I guess, with the pep peppers and the onions and whatnot. <clears throat> I know the first time that I made it, family just devoured it. And it's a uh, requested item that uh, they want me to make quite often. So <clears throat> hopefully we'll get this kind of cooking really quick. I know this video, again, is going to be a little long, but like I said, I'm, this is on my phone. I don't have the editing software yet. So this is everything that's going on is how it happens. Man. So it's almost like you were 
in the backyard with me just waiting for me to get this stuff grilled up <clears throat> so a couple of notes about the channel um, I kind of did it as a you know whatever I may do an unboxing I may do some reviews I may do some cook I, cooking really wasn't a part of it but that seems to be really what people like so I'll cook some more and I have no problem with that I actually enjoy cooking quite a bit <clears throat> so the grill shows up as a gift kind of looked at it and went uh really you know, i was kind of hoping for the camp chef but yeah you know what we'll, we'll give it a we'll give it a whirl and then when i took it out of the box and i noticed the four igniters i'm like well blackstone must be listening to their customers and they're actually updating their stuff and to be honest except for the grease trap in the back which i better put back before i start developing grease <laughs> and burning my forearm. Um, it's really not one of my favorite things on this. It's really the only thing that I just dislike. And th there we go. So the majority of that just comes from my experience when I cooked before. Um, our griddle top was probably maybe, I would say, eight inches wider or uh, taller and maybe another foot wider. And the grease trap was conveniently in front so we had like a two inch trough right where this would be you scrape everything here you scrape it down it went into the huge huge grease trap and at the end of the night you emptied it cleaned everything up and you were good to go but i gotta say this isn't really such a bad setup because i've got space now i'm not really half gonna have to chase the food as much even though there was one occasion I was doing some uh, chicken fajitas. And I did lose one piece through the grease trap back here. Now, if you want to get around that, the, what I did, and I wish I was doing it now, but I can't seem to find my scraper, is I have a all-metal, like, dough scraper. Most of you guys probably know what I'm talking about. And you just get a metal, metal clip and attach it to the back, and you really only have that portion of it where you actually have to worry about the grease and the food. And that is a much better situation as far as I'm concerned, based on my cooking experience and uh, likes and dislikes. So, But I gotta say, now with, with all four of these uh, individual burners that have igniters, I'm actually happy with this grill. I mean, I like it. I don't see myself wanting to sit there and go, well, Later on down the line, I'll buy the camp ship if I really wanted, because it'll do what I wanted to do. <clears throat> and the one that I was going to get, yeah, it's a little bit wider than this one. But I can actually get everything I need to get accomplished on this grill without too much trouble. So, And so far, I haven't gone through a whole lot of propane. I know that now I'll probably get a little close to the danger zone, which, kind of looking at it now... I should still have enough to complete this cook, I hope. I think I do. So, get this get this bacon going, and then we will uh, get the other components on here, and then start the pork chops. It'll be done here probably quicker than most people would think. So, uh, so I noticed that when I did the unboxing on the 17-inch, I got a few views on that one, but I not as much as I've gotten on the part two where I actually cooked that burger. And I've gotten a few comp or a few comments on the burger, like one or two comments, um, except for the people that meet me in face to face and they say, "Hey man, that was a great burger." I'm like, "Well, let's put a comment on my YouTube channel, you know, help me, out. whatever." But you know, oops, lost piece of bacon. That's never good. But. Uh, that's gotten, I think as of right now, I'm looking at like 291 views on that. And the, uh, the original one that I did, a uh, video that I did on my gas burners, which was the three, the three gas burners, um, I think I'm looking at almost 961 views. So for those of you guys that are actually looking at my videos, checking them out, again, thank you very much. That's very, you know, help me out a little bit more. You know, share the videos. Give me a like. Give me some comments. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you want me to try something culinary-wise, give me a shot. You know, I'll, I'll try just about anything. <clears throat> Except for foie gras. I will not 
deal with goose liver. That's just not something that I'm going to end up seeing myself eating after the fact. But anyway, um, let me know what you guys think, man. I, uh, all comments are appreciated. I'll respond to everyone that I see as much as I can, as quickly as I can. You know, if you got some, you know, think I should be doing something different, hey, you know, let me know. Hey, I think you should be doing this. You know, I'll take it into, take it into consideration. But this has turned into hopefully something that will uh, help me work towards being self-sufficient when I retire, which is who knows when it is. I mean, I'm a, quite a few years away from that now, but who knows what happens tomorrow. So it's going to continue to cook down. I want to get it nice and brown. I don't want it to cook all the way to my liking, which is not crispy, but not soft. It's kind of in between. And that's why I really like using the uh, Fit Cut bacon, because it really gets there. You get some sustenance, substance to it. Um, flavor is freaking awesome on it. And I will be adding a little bit of seasoning to that corn when I get it in there, because most of the components, so you have the bacon, which is salty. Uh, but everything else, the bell peppers, the onion, and the corn, it's all sweet. So I want to kind of break that up a little bit, and I'll add a little bit of my own seasoning to it. Um, the seasoning has got some uh, paprika, some cayenne, salt, pepper, um, I think there's some brown sugar in there. It's a combination that I, I looked up and I saw the recipe online and I kind of adjusted it to what I and my family like. So it's the, uh, the amounts of all the components are a little bit different, a little bit more on some and not so much on others. You know, just pretty much how everybody would do it. You know, you see something you like, but it's not quite to your taste. You, you adjust it, right? You make it yours. All right, you know, it's not the most exciting thing to sit here and watch bacon sizzle, but once we get the other stuff going, it's going to actually be fast pace I gotta pay attention to both and I haven't done that like I said since I actually cooked you know temperatures and times and this goes down this and this goes down then so that they both come up at the same time I'm actually getting some really really nice heat now just like with any other you're gonna have hot spots and cold spots on any flat top grill um, pretty much over where all these burners are, are gonna be your hot spots without you know exception and you can turn you know, some of the dials down, some of the dials up, so you can actually cook in zones. And that's the one thing you really can't do with the 17-inch uh, that I did, or I did a review on. Um, that's one burner, so you have one temperature, and you have to kind of find your hot spots on the grill surface itself, where in this, uh, this case, you can actually control it. Sorry about all the clicking, but you can actually control it a little bit and adjust it so that it's more consistent with what your needs are, cooking needs are. <clears throat> so, um, I still have not found my thermal thermometer, or my digital thermometer, so I really can't tell you what we're looking at, but you gotta be, just a guess, you're probably somewhere between two, 300 degrees. I know that's kind of a wide, wide guess there. But, you know, you do the best you can with what you got. Now I know the restaurant that I was working at, they weren't burning quite that hot. So the, the learning curve here is not as bad as I expected, but there is a little bit of curve. So you kind of have to do a couple of cooks on here. Um, maybe depending on what you would normally cook, maybe cook a breakfast uh, and a dinner and maybe just periodically try some different types of meats and stuff to kind of find out where you need to place it, where your temperatures need to be and to get the exact cooks that you're looking for. So this is getting really close to what I'm looking for. I'm let it go just a couple minutes longer. Again, I know this video is gonna be longer than it really should, just like all my other ones, I do apologize for that. But pretty soon here, we're looking at getting some, uh, we'll have uh, some better camera equipment and we'll actually have some editing software. So I can actually cut these videos down to 10, 15 minutes and not take up a whole second of somebody's important life, depending on where you're at and you're watching these videos. Anyway. So that's getting right about where I think I need to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off and drop it right inside the uh, bowl here with the 
paper towels so it won't clean out. It won't be as greasy, which would be wonderful. And of course, I'm making a mess just to get a big fat paper. in there that can really improve things. So the first thing I'm going to put down are the bell peppers because those are going to take a couple minutes to soften up. And like I said, I have one full red and one full green. Drop down here. <clears throat> Spread those out and get those to soften up a little bit. And I'm just looking for these to break down a little bit so that you get kind of the crunch out of them. And once that happens, probably in uh, three, four minutes maybe, I will add the onions to this and get those mixed up. Get those going. And then I will then begin the pork chops. So I wasn't going to do a quote-unquote review on the pork chops, but they were, they were pre-marinated. Um, don't know what they're marinated in. But I do know that we've got some uh, garlic and some paprika in there, uh, some salt, of course, and some bell pepper. Bell pepper, sorry, regular pepper. They smell good, but they are thin, so it's not going to take those very long to get fully cooked. So, like I was saying, with the, uh, the grease trap in the back, you kind of find yourself chasing the food, trying to keep it from going through the grease trap, and in this case really not that big a deal. It's you can keep the food further up towards where you're working and every once in a while you get an errant piece that goes towards the back but you're not having to really worry about losing any of your products down the line back to grow. Except for the piece of chicken I lost. I might be still a little bit about that so forgive me if I seem a little, a little angry. goes to waste. This is not a very rich household. So bacon's looking good. This is on. This is starting to look good. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Uh, a little COVID I blew on the other side, I guess. I, don't know. I know there's probably going to be some people that might not like that comment. I don't care. Whatever. So we're looking good here. These are actually cooking a little bit faster than I want, so I'm going to go ahead and add the onions. And it's one complete Vidali onion diced, just like the bell pepper. So I'm going to let the heat kind of run up through the uh, bell peppers there and start that going. So this is literally, I've never had grilled corn before. I tried it, you know, I think the first time was maybe two, three weeks ago. And once I did, I'm like, what kind of sheltered childhood did I lead where I've never had this kind of stuff before? But that was, growing up, that wasn't my family. That's not the way they wanted to do things or could do things. So I'm kind of letting my kids experience some of the things I never did and it's turned out really good so far. All right, so. Go ahead and throw a little bit of oil down on this side so it can kind of dry. Use our spatula here to kind of spread that out. Get a nice little smoke off of that. I have a total of eight chops, and when you see these things, you're going to go like, oh yeah, okay. They're pretty thick, they're going to cook really fast, and I hope you guys can hear me over all this noise. Give this a mix, kind of get, and that's looking very, very good. And the smell is incredible. I know every once in a while people are, what's that smell of vision? Well, if you did, you guys would be probably heading out to freaking Burger King or Taco Bell or something to get something to eat because this smells incredible. 
the bell peppers, the onions, it's just nice and delicious. All right, so here are our very thin, but very delicious looking pork chops. And just go ahead and start dropping these on. The Viva cook. Like I said, these are very thin cut, pre-marinated, so it's not going to take very long for these to cook at all. Now my burner is right here, so I'm going to kind of go on either side of that. That'll kind of control the heat a little bit. And there we go. And you can tell by the sound we're cooking now. So let's go back here to the vegetables and the onions. Looking really good. Now because the corn is frozen, I'm going to go ahead and throw those in, that in now and let's get that heated up. And the last bit is going to be the bacon when I throw the bacon back on there. And we're going to give the pork chops here three, four minutes maybe and then we'll flip them over maybe a little bit longer. We'll kind of play it by ear. And then uh, we'll kind of see how that goes. So, so far everything's looking good. Um, this grill, this flat top grill, i got to say, can't, or not can't just, sorry. Blackstone, you, you've got a good product here. I mean, the individual igniters was the big thing. I really would like to see them do something with this grease trap in the back. Maybe everybody likes that, and I'm the only oddball that doesn't. You know, but it is what it is. Um, I would like to see it up front with a little bit of a trough and a, and a grease trap up front, but, you know, I only, I'm only using this thing, you know, I don't design it, so. Onions are going down, sweating down really nice. Bell peppers are starting to show a little bit of browning going on, which is nice. So let me get this uh, corn on. So one of the gifts, presents that I got for no particular reason, whatever, was uh, some knives. Now this particular knife, I'm actually in love with this knife, even though I didn't want to buy it. I'll do a review on this uh, a little bit later and I'll explain all the things about that. this knife. Is really, really nice. Sharp is sharp can be. So what I just got is just some typical generic sweet white cut corn. Frozen, like I mentioned. I'm just going to throw that down on the grill. And I'm going to leave it just like that. I'm going to let the steam come up and the vegetables cook with the pressure of the corn. Let that go here for a few minutes. Uh, we're probably getting pretty close to when I want to try to maybe turn these over. You know, we're looking, we're looking good. I think these are going to come out really nice. I mean, I, I don't know. I've never had Omaha, sorry, never had Omaha pork chops before. I've had their steaks once, maybe 20 years ago. Uh, so I don't know. They were good then. This is their own marinade. It came in a, a plastic package, vacuum wrap, that's pre marinated. Um, I'm not sure if this is parsley or what we got going on with these uh, little green bits here. Maybe, uh, looks like maybe green onion. Yeah, green onion. So, nice. So, I'll spare you guys for a minute. Uh, shut my mouth while I take a drink of my quote unquote juice. And uh, let this stuff cook out a little bit. Okay, so cleaning. What I do is at the end of the cook, no matter what I'm cooking, is I let the hot food go inside and I immediately cooked down the grill. Now when I seasoned this, I gave it five passes of let it heat up, put the oil on it, let it heat up, put the oil on it, let it heat up. Just, just the way you would season it per the instructions. And there is a little bit of sticking that occurs, but again, I'm not knocking Blackstone for that. It's uh, It occurs no matter what grill I've ever used, Blackstone. But it is a very nice grill, like with the, the peppers and the corn and stuff. No issues whatsoever with it sticking to the to the grill. 
so it looks like it's about time to start tossing those. Start getting that mixed up. Now I know I showed uh, one of my coworkers that the corn that I did, and the only really the only comment he had to me is, "Hey, it looks good. There's a lot of bacon in there." I'm like, "The hell's wrong with that?" Well, nothing. I'm like, well, yeah, of course. I like a lot of bacon in mine. Bacon is flavor. So we're looking really good. I think we got a good amount of bell pepper and onion to corn going on. I think it's going to be an actually wonderful accompaniment to the uh, pork chops that I got down right now. Let that go for a couple more minutes. Then we'll throw the bacon back in and we'll toss it some more. Now for what we got going on with the pork chops, I do want to get a little bit of color. Oh, that's, yeah. Let's flip these over, get these going. A little bit too much for my taste over here on these two, but still not bad, not bad. These are looking a little bit better. We've got a nice uh, crust building up on them. Cooking off really good. Turn that down a little bit more. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this middle one completely off. So this one is off. This one is down to low. And I have these two down to medium low. Kind of somewhere in the, in the room there. So we'll let those continue to sit there and do what they got to do. Pop this a little bit more. Nice and mixed going there. We've got some nice caramelization going on with the peppers and the onions. That's what I want to see. Good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the bacon back into this. Just like I did with the corn, I'm going to leave it on top there for a couple minutes. Just let the heat, the steam come through and kind of keep it uh, nice and warm there. And this bowl is like really, really, really friggin' hot. All right, there we go. Looking really, really good. So I'm going to let this go for a minute or two. I'm going to run in the house and grab a bigger bowl for this corn when it comes off the grill. And we will be right back with you. There is one thing that I think is pretty important to bring up, and that is these side tables. I would not put anything as far as plastic or anything that you won't expect to either melt, catch fire, or whatever, because the heat that's coming outside of here and here and also the back is pretty intense. Those glass bowls that I picked up were really, really, really hot. So one thing to keep in mind. Um, I've also heard, even though I haven't experienced it yet, the shelf that's below the grill is pretty close to the bottom of the burners. So if you put anything down there like plastic bottles, uh, your water bottles, uh, I don't know. If you have, like I have, I've got a Cuisinart melting dome which has like a rubber, kind of like these handles here on the top. Those would definitely either melt or literally catch fire. So I would avoid putting anything down there on the sides that you wouldn't expect to be hot. Uh, again, I, I gotta say it again, I was really dead set against Blackstone. But this uh, this improvements that they've made, I'm actually really enjoying this griddle. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my seasoning, put a little bit down on here, get it mixed up. It's gonna be a little hard because of the wind. Looking good right about there. 
It may look like a lot, but it's actually a knot because we've got to mix it up and get it incorporated throughout. But that just adds that little bit of a spicy kick to the sweetness. It's a really good combination. It blends really, really, really well. So we're just about ready, just about done. Those pork chops, I would say, are really close to being done. So in a couple more minutes, we'll be pulling everything off and we'll be ending this video for you. So again, if you guys like what you see, you know, give me a heads up, drop a comment, share these videos, guys, please. This is uh, something that I'm really hoping might someday help supplement my retirement fund. So, and if you guys like, if you see something that you want to see, if you guys have a recipe that you guys haven't tried and want to see somebody else try before you do it, by all means, you know, hit me up. I have no issues trying new things. Uh, Culinary-wise, I'm pretty experimental, so I'll give just about anything a shot. Um, I did get a comment on one video where they wanted me to do a torta, which I am going to do, and I'm going to do it on this grill right here. Uh, fortunately, that comment kind of came in right about when I started hitting my, uh, my troubles, if you will. And I'm probably looking at a couple more weeks before I can get that kind of evened out. And then I'll be uh, doing some more videos. After which I'm hoping I'll have the new camera, new editing software, make these so they're not like incredibly difficult to watch. I know long videos, you know, I have a hard time watching long videos on YouTube also. So, you know, I'm right, right there with you, I understand. But I'm doing the best I can with what I got. Um... So I do plan on taking some uh, backtrack, backpacking trips and camping trips coming up here in the nearest couple of months. I'm going to uh, film those and maybe do some reviews on some new knives that I've gotten. I've got a real, really large, extensive knife collection. Um, I've got some tops, some SEs, uh, you know, CRKT. I've, I've got a lot of stuff in there, so kind of put those things to their paces. I wasn't really big on buying a new knife and then taking it out to the freaking forest and then hammering on it, see if it'll break, because if it breaks, then guess what? I'm out of knife. But, uh, you know, we'll put it through some paces, see what it does, see how it goes. And camping is just one of the things that I really, I really enjoyed. I really do. And I know a lot of you probably do as well. So, here we go. Corn's just about done. Let me see where we're on the pork chops. Yeah, these are right where I want them. Just gonna turn the beat down. We got a nice little color on the other side. Yeah, those those are looking good. Let's put them back over on the second side. Let those go for another minute. Corn's just about done. Got some nice heat going through there. Spices are well incorporated. Everything's going through everything. Good looking corn. Now I know guys that a lot of times when you watch these cooking videos, you like to see the people try the food at the end. And I, I really would love to, uh, but I think that would just make these videos a little bit too long. So once I get uh, once I get my new equipment and my software, I will absolutely do that for you. In the meantime, this is just, uh, this is more about the grill right now than it is the actual food, so. And I gotta say, the the Blackstone 36 inch flat top grill, I gotta give it to them. I'm, I'm not unhappy with this at all. I'm actually very happy I got it. And uh, it'll be used very frequently now that we got the summer going. So the 17 inch one, you're probably going to see on my camping videos, I'm probably going to take that along with uh, one of my camp stoves, you know, whatever, just because uh, I think I need to give it another chance. I really, uh, really didn't like it the first time I tried it, and I know that here in a couple of years here, when my kids are moved out and they're living their own lives, one of them is going to come back and go, hey, Dad, uh, you think I could use that 17 year, 17 inch grill of yours? Uh, and I'll, I'll just go, yeah, okay, just bring it back. Okay, I will. And I will never see it again. Uh, some of you guys that are up there in age, you kind of know what I'm saying. If you got kids. So we're looking really good. That's the, 
the, if you can see the bacon is cooked up a little bit more, a little bit more color, that's right the kind of consistency that I'm looking for. So I'm going to try to transfer it into this bowl before the bowl catches fire and without dropping any, but I really don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, I dropped some already. Well, whatever falls on the ground belongs to the dog. That's what I say. All right. Ah. I never did cook with two spatulas. I don't, I don't really get it. I, I, I can see how it could be useful, but I'm kind of struggling with it. I'll get my skills up. Get my skills up for y'all. There we go. And there is my... Grilled corn, bacon, bell pepper, and onion, a little bit of seasoning. Looking really good, and believe me, it looks, tastes way better than it looks. All right. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull our pork chops off here. Perfect. Here we go. Go. You got your grilled pork chops with grilled corn. All right, guys, let me know what you think. Share, like, and share the video, please. And uh, send me a comment if you wish. And I will see you guys again.